Okay, so I've let this piece dry out just a little bit. It's still pretty wet um, in the mouthpiece because this is pretty thick, uh, but the back has stiffened up enough that you know I can I can hold it, I can work with it, and I don't have to worry about collapsing it. Uh, so it's not quite to leather hard, uh, but it's uh, to pass that sort of wet wear feel. This is about perfect um, for opening up um, the airway, which will come in to the front of the uh, ocarina and we'll use um, our fipple sticks in order to get in there and also opening up the window. Uh, this stuff uh, is deceptively complicated. Um, so what we'll do is uh, kind of walk through it a little bit more slowly uh, the first time and we'll start with this window. Essentially, the window is um, uh, it's gonna come straight back from the opening. It should be in alignment. Uh, we're going to use uh, one of our sticks to sort of open up the airway and as um, the airway intersects with the um, window, uh, we should get um, sort of this circulating airflow inside the body of the bell and that airflow gets cut by what we'll call the blade. And the blade is a really sharp edge uh, just in here and that uh, sort of tapers down into a ramp. So you, um, it's a little bit difficult to see on the ocarina in my hand, but essentially, right, uh, air passes in through the front, right, in the direction of the fipple stick here, and part of the breath gets trapped inside the ocarina and starts to spin, and part of the breath is forced out. And it's uh, it's that split that creates the whistle, and so that's how, uh, that's how we'll start kind of thinking through this. Essentially, uh, we're going to cut straight down into the top of our ocarina here, uh, and hopefully find the back wall of the um, of that sort of chamber. Uh, if I can sort of find it easily on my first try, I don't have to do too much repairing, and then I will feed um, the sort of opening in. Uh, it is sort of worth probably thinking about since you guys have been in ceramics class long enough, right, that eventually these will start to become something, right? So I don't know, I just sort of was like holding this thing in my hand and I was imagining it having some you know, little legs and sort of creaturely and what the mouthpiece might actually be shaped into. If you want to start to think about, you know, ideas and sketch some stuff out, um, I think that could be really cool. Uh, it's not necessary, but I'm already thinking about, you know, how I want to remove some of this mouthpiece material and, you know, have some legs in mind here. So uh, kind of keep that in the back of your head as you're working. Now I'm going to start with this skinniest fipple stick and just do some markings on my ocarina here where I'm going to mark where I'm pretty sure that window is going to be located. I just put a little uh, divot in the um, in the ocarina here. Everything that I'm doing now is repairable because it might be wrong, right? And I'll kind of check to see if I think that's vertically aligned right. I think that's about right. And I'm going to start with a plunge sort of straight down into uh, the neck. And hopefully I don't hit uh, just sort of solid block of clay here, but I sort of hit an air chamber and I'm pretty much there. Now the reason I started with my small stick here is if I goof, um, I, I didn't just make a giant gaping hole in my piece, but now that I'm pretty sure I'm in the correct spot, I'll start to open up that opening uh, a little bit wider and a little bit wider using my larger uh, fipple sticks. Now the reason we're going to be doing this sort of stair stepping technique is uh, I don't want to rip the clay, I want to compress the clay. And so by uh, reaming the openings, um, I'll sort of open it up and do as little damage as possible with my initial cut. And then each successive piece that I put in um, is only starting to stretch that clay. It's not actually ripping or cutting the clay. And so now that I'm sort of going straight into the piece, I can kind of cut that straight down and I'm going to pull it back towards the mouthpiece a little bit and see if I can sort of make that a nice vertical wall where the tool comes down straight in and uh, imagine it sort of continues right and I'm just kind of trying to make that a nice vertical wall at the back here. Okay, good enough for now and I'm sort of looking down into that hole now and I can tell that I'm pretty much at the opening. Uh, I cut just a little bit down into the wall of the um, ocarina here but it's it's pretty good. Now I'm going to sort of size my opening and uh, you're more or less going to be about the same size as your um, middle size fipple stick. It's not quite the full width 
of your um, of your uh, first popsicle sticks. It's the sort of thin thinned down one, and uh, it's a square opening, so uh, it is as wide as it is tall. Just going to sort of like lightly mark roughly where that window should be, and then you know, keeping in mind here that this back edge will be the blade uh, that's going to be cutting. Uh, cutting the air as I breathe it in, cutting my breath as I breathe it in. So I'm not going to do too much more messing with that, not yet. Uh, at this point, I'm about ready to sort of open up uh, that voicing, open up the, the uh, um, airway that cuts straight in. Okay, so I can kind of look down into my window here. I know it's not quite open large enough, but I can see where my voicing is going to come in, where my airway is going to come in, and because I already have a feeling I'm going to cut this mouthpiece down a little bit, I might actually come in and just remove that clay uh, early. You could remove that with, um, you know, whatever tool you happen to have around. I just reached for an X-Acto blade, so I'll use that here. And I might use that clay for some legs later, so I'll keep that wrapped up in plastic. So it's always a good idea to start with too much clay, and then I can always kind of work those, work that back. So now I'm going to do some aligning. I want my window to be perfectly in alignment with the airway. So I'm going to kind of mark on the top here where that uh, airway should pierce in. And I want to make sure that I hit that sort of leading edge, um, uh, hit this blade. Uh, sort of just below the surface. I'm going to have to remove some clay from this area here uh, in order that this back edge can become a blade. So I don't want to cut my airway in too high and I don't, also don't want to come in too low. I want to come in uh, with enough clay that kind of matches the rough thickness of the piece up here so that as I pierce straight through and now I'm looking down through into the opening that when I see the stick pierce uh, I can sort of see it enter into that space uh, just below the edge and it's making good contact. So it's actually in the clay. So now I know that I'm right in, uh, so now I can start to stretch that opening just a little bit. So I ended up kind of ripping and pushing just a little bit too much clay in there, and what I eventually will have to do is do some repair, but that's not too bad. Now I'll start by um, leaving the, uh, I'm going to leave my um, voicing alone, my airway alone, and focus all of my work here on this blade. Now I need to cut a ramp uh, that sort of um, doesn't make the, the window any bigger than it actually is here, but I'm going to cut a ramp down. With the sharpest blade tool that I have, this could be something that you made, or it could be something like um, I happen to have an X-Acto blade here, a sharp razor blade, and I'm going to carefully remove a little bit of that clay so that I start to shape the ramp. Some of this clay will be cut away, and some of this clay will just sort of be pushed and shaped. I'm paying really close attention to the thickness of this piece now and also paying really close attention to where my airway comes in so that the airway and that lip are in alignment. What I think I'll do at this point is push one of my airway sticks in as far as I can to establish the, width, the right width and then use one of my ramp sticks here in tandem to start to shape that lip. And I'm going to start by making it too small. Uh, because once that gets ripped open too wide, it's really tricky to repair it at this point. Uh, I can always kind of open that, open that opening a little bit wider, open that voicing a little bit wider, but it's very difficult to 
close it up. So I'm putting two sticks in contact with each other now. I'm, I have my sort of voicing stick that I'm pushing down into contact with my airway stick. And where they meet is creating that blade that's going to cut the air. And right now, all of my lines are a little bit messy. Eventually, the cleaner your voicing and the cleaner your airway is, the cleaner the sound that your ocarina will make. Anywhere that I can compress the clay and flatten it out and smooth it in there, that's a good thing. Now, as I carefully remove my airway stick, there's a good chance that I'm going to leave a whole bunch of schnipples in that airway that will clog it all up. So I'm not going to blow and sort of waste my time trying to get my ocarina to sing it until I get all of that uh, clay out of the airway. Anything that sort of creates turbulence where the air can't sort of cut nice and smoothly uh, is just going to make your ocarina sound airy and and it will not sing. So what I have in terms of the anatomy of the ocarina now is I have the airway opening uh, which is just a little wide here. I may kind of collapse that down a little bit. Then I have an airway exit uh, which is sort of the back edge of my uh, airway comes in right here and then the blade and the blade is what's going to be cutting that air and uh, I can kind of see down into my ocarina now there's a lot of blobby bits of clay in there I'm gonna have to sort of slowly kind of work that down work that down and clean that up um, but I'm also gonna be very careful not to open up this uh, this opening too wide uh, and I'll kind of continually sort of blow on this ocarina to sort of hear it sound and I'm going to stop all of my carving and shaping as soon as I hear that ocarina sing. So I'll try it now just to sort of see if I have any sound at all and, uh, and I'll do all of my sculpting from here on out in response to what it sounds like. A real airy sound at first. I'll push the blade down a little bit just by sort of pressing my fingers down on the blade and seeing if I, I was just a little bit too high. So a couple things, right? Um, my airway is probably too messy and my blade is probably not sharp enough. So I'm gonna continue sculpting inside the airway and cleaning this all up. And I'm going to have to carefully manage my dry times. Um, my dry times, I wanna keep this clay right at about leather hard stage as I'm working on the airway. As I blow into the airway, um, I'm going to be adding moisture from my lungs, my mouth, and my breath. Uh, that's going to hydrate the clay and get, make it real gummy inside of here. So uh, it's handy to have uh, a blow dryer around or a fan, something that you can just sort of continually dry the inside of your ocarina voicing. Uh, the more that you can um, sort of keep that dry, the better, uh, but you're going to have to be constantly blowing in it to get it to sing. So um, the, uh, the sort of game is Keep it, uh, keep it right at that perfect amount of dryness.
So I'm in the very early stages of getting um, sort of a voice to come from my piece. And essentially what needs to happen is as that airway comes into the piece, it doesn't only have to be clean, but it has to be at about the right level of the blade. Uh, your airway and the blade uh, should be um, sort of positioned at about a halfway point where the blade is aligned at about the halfway point with um, the voicing. Now you may not, or with the um, airway, you may not be able to see what's going on there, but you should be able to hear it. And the messier, right, that you have in here, uh, the messier your, your sort of voicing airway is, uh, the more difficult it will be to hear your piece sing. Uh, but uh, early on, when you first get your ocarina to make a noise, it may be a little airy. Um, and it depends on how much breath you give it. A very, very light breath uh, usually is what you need, all you need to get your ocarina to sing. Uh, and then the sooner your, uh, your note blows out, um, that's a sort of uh, a sign of sort of a poorly shaped or an incomplete uh, window on the inside. So if you give it a lot of breath in a hurry and it just blows the note out and becomes really breathy, uh, keep working on that. Uh, it'll sharpen up the note. What I'll do is I'll use a blow dryer to just sort of stiffen up some of the clay in there so that I can keep sharpening the blade and positioning it correctly. So continue to work your voicing and uh, make sure that you're using your small pipple stick occasionally. You have to go inside to the uh, voicing and just remove any uh, sort of bits of clay or chunks that might be disrupting the airflow on the inside. Uh, if you're still not getting a good voicing, I'll provide some links right to some other instrument makers who may, um, may have a technique that uh, can help you. Uh, but as long as you're getting some kind of sound, Even if your note blows away kind of early, consider it a success for your first um, ocarina. And uh, one of the other techniques, right, that I'm going to con keep continuing to do is don't allow your um, the sort of uh, airway to get too large. Keep it clean. Keep all the chunks. Kind of keep looking down into that space. And if you see any chunks, uh, insert one of your sticks and continue to compress it. Uh, your sticks will be used sort of in two basic ways. Uh, one of them will be cutting uh, and chiseling. The other one will be kind of compressing. And uh, think of um, compressing a little bit more like um, sort of like spraying butter on toast, right? I'm not ripping clay out so much as I'm just pushing clay that's already in there down and I'm sort of flattening it uh, in order to kind of keep it from disrupting airflow to keep those lines as clean as possible. And uh, you should have a window that's based on probably your medium sized to large sized uh, pipple stick. And the other thing would be to continue to sort of shape and sharpen that, uh, that lip, that uh, sharp edge on the inside that should, um, uh, should be splitting the air. Because it needs to cut the air, it needs to be pretty sharp. And so sharp and strong. Keep compressing that. If it gets a little soggy because you've been blowing on it and playing notes, uh, go ahead and um, sort of flatten that out again. Maybe give it a little blow air drill, uh, give it a little time, give it a little blow dryer to, uh, to dry that out. strong note out of that ocarina. I'm going to call that one done for right now and and I'll spend the rest of the tutorial adding some legs and shaping the uh, shaping the mouthpiece.